Divorce lawyers of Reddit. What's the most outrageous reason someone filed for divorce? I'm a lawyer that handles quite a few divorces, among other things. And I've seen all sorts of reasons for marriages ending. The only thing that is consistently true and relevant to this question is that it is never for just one reason. And it is never one-sided. In fact, I've started telling potential clients in our initial interview that I'm well aware that I'm going to uncover some dirt on my client in the process, not to scare them, but to put their mind to ease that I've seen worse. The fact that you haven't been 100% an angel up to this point doesn't scare me, and I'd rather find out about it from my client beforehand than later on from their spouse at the worst possible moment. All this is just to say that when you hear about people divorcing over one stupid argument or mistake, usually that's just the straw that broke the camel's back. That said, some of the lighter straws I've seen include, asterisk a guy who is 100% convinced that his wife, our client, is actually a lesbian, in love with his sister and just using him as a cover, but he also claims she is having sex with me to pay for her legal fees. And with every male whose phone number is in her call history, asterisk a woman who is divorcing my client, because he was too sad after his father died last year, my client had to break down her door to get his father's ashes a few weeks after he left the house and she refused to let him back in or give them to him. And asterisk a woman who claims my client was emotionally abusive towards her because he refused to yell at her and sat in silence ignoring her when she screamed at him. He has this recorded time stamped for the dates and time she insists the incidents occurred and she's listened to them and his complete silence as she goes on tirades and insists this proves her point that he was emotionally distant and abusive. Then. But he also claims she is having sex with me to pay for her legal fees. And with every male whose phone number is in her call history my ex was like this. I couldn't go grocery shopping with my mother without being accused of using her for cover to meet other men. The first thing he screamed at me when I finally told him to get out was that I was only doing this so I could go sell myself on the internet now. Then. Jesus titty fucking Christ how do some people get to be that possessive? My dad was a divorce lawyer. He had a client who wanted to divorce her husband for two reasons. One, he did not have enough hair on his chest. Two, he did not drive fast enough. Keep in mind this was in the 70s when chest hair was a bit more important. Then. Shit yeah. It would have been embarrassing to show up late at a pool party and your man not having a decent chest bush. Then. A luscious mane of hair from my chest pubes down to my bull row. Then. She's had the old bull. Maybe she wants the young calf. Then. She was kidnapped in Mexico and he refused to pay ransom. Eventually her family managed to pay and she was left on the side of the road. It is not outrageous as in petty, but outrageous as how absurd that is. Then. Honey I love you. But we agreed to save up money so we can purchase a house. Your ransom would really set us back. Apostrophe. I don't really think I can add a ransom line item to this month's budget. Everything is already super tight. I was a legal assistant when this case came in. But this lady divorced her husband of two months because he got her an iPad case for her birthday instead of the expensive jewelry she wanted. Then. He was frustrated by her hoarding. She was frustrated by his utter uselessness. He filed for divorce. And she was my client. Her prized possession was a room or two full of scrapbooking materials. His prized possession was a yard full of junk cars that he never worked on. They had no children and no real assets. They hated each other more than any two people I'd ever met. And the only terms they would agree to were these. He gets the scrapbooking stuff. And she gets the cars. My client also took the house. As he had no income and didn't want it anyway. It was the shortest divorce decree I ever drafted. I intentionally squeezed it onto one page. And the judge. And I had a good laugh over it. Once the decree was signed and filed. She hauled all the scrapbooking stuff to the yard. And he removed it to the dump. She then called a junk shop I referred her to. And had all of his cars removed from the yard. Edit. These two also fought over a toilet brush. As he didn't want to have to buy one. When he moved out, I politely instructed my client to give him the goddamn toilet brush. Edit 2. Thanks for the silver. Kind stranger. That's the first award I've ever gotten. 
Yay. This is so petty and so stupid. Holy jeez. Agreed. But it was effective. From what I can tell. They are both much happier now. And to some degree. I think it helped them understand that they didn't need the crap they'd been hoarding. Ben. I had some friends get divorced because she legit hated Dale Leonard and he legit hated Jeff Gordon. Ben. Oh man this brings back childhood memories. Kind of related story that totally doesn't matter. Growing up my dad was big into Nasca and loved Dale Leonard. Hated Jeff Gordon of course. I loved Dale too. But I also secretly loved Jeff and hid it. I must have been around 6, 8 ish. One day while the race was on, I was so upset about betraying my dad or something by liking Jeff Gordon that my mom found me crying in my room. After I told her why I was upset, she went and got my dad and he sat and told me it was okay for me to like Jeff Gordon even if he doesn't, that I'm allowed to like whatever I want, that makes me happy, and that nothing more would make him happier. Then he hugged me and told me to come watch the race and cheer him on. Later that week he got me a hash 24 sticker to put on my mirror in my room. IDK. I don't have very many good memories in my life, but that is one of them. Edit. Y'all. I'm a girl. So some of these jokes don't work lol. Ben. Your dad sounds like a good dude. At least in this story. Ben. Adder I like this conditional statement. It's honestly perfect for edit. At least in this story, should be the new closing of just about every judgment call here. I didn't like her anymore. Two days after being married. Ben. In sickness and in heath. Till disinterest do you part. I knew a guy from a high school job who divorced his wife of two months. Because she would sleep with a night light. But he could only sleep in total darkness. As they apparently never lived together until after getting married. He hated her nightlight so much that he would often sleep on the couch instead. But sometimes he would claim the bed for himself and lock her out of the bedroom for the night. This was an eccentric late 40s man working at a Burger King who acted like all the other high school cowalkers were his best chums and often told us these weird stories. I'm glad I don't work with him anymore. Ben. I worked as a paralegal for a divorce lawyer. Case analysis was one of my main responsibilities. I should you not. A recently married couple of two years broke it off because the husband would not stop feeding the dog. The dog got outrageously fat. Apparently she saw connection between the dog and future children. Ben. My client put his wife in an assisted living facility based on a misdiagnosis. The medication of which caused the wife to be unable to care for herself. While in the facility, my client asterisk shocker asterisk started dating another woman and methinks began using hard drugs. He used a loot of money on both of these things. She eventually got off the medication and got better. Suffice to say, she was not happy about what had transpired. Ben. My grandfather's brother was a judge who presided over state issue marriages from time to time. One couple he married returned six months later to confirm the wedding and end their trial marriage. When he thusly informed them that there was no such thing and that they had been married for six months they subsequently broke up. Ben. My client was the outrageous one. So my heart went out to his poor wife. He had OCD which manifested primarily financially. So he made their lives a penny pinching hell. Examples. He was obsessed with avoiding unnecessary driving, wear and tear on the car, gas expenses. So he cut the whole family's hair at home and never let them eat at a restaurant or go to the movies. Weirdest of all, he kept one toilet paper roll on him at all times and you had to get one square from him before you could go to the bathroom. He never gave more than one square. Wife finally got fed up and left him when one, he gave her bangs during an in-home haircut and two, their daughter was so traumatized by the toilet paper thing they couldn't potty train her. Also, he hated paying his divorce lawyer bill. He was also an old-fashioned mega-catholic who considered divorce a deadly sin. He viewed my whole job as an unnecessary and sinful expense. Ben. Holy shit one square? One fucking square? Does he shit rabbit pellets? That guy is a monster. Ben. Yeah. That got me. Too. If I was the wife I'd start wiping myself with his shirts or something. He doesn't like it? Well. 
give me some fucking toilet paper. Then. Man I was going to say that our client was served divorce papers for sending a couple hundred thousand dollars overseas in a scam. But damn you guys, got better ones than me. Damn. Damn. You are too stupid to stay married to apostrophe. Not me, but a friend my mum has divorced her husband because his mother still coddled him at age 40 with his consent. They lived with his mother, common in Asia. By coddle I mean that she would walk straight into their room after his shower and powder his back for him. They couldn't lock their bedroom door because his mother would come in as and when she wanted. If they locked the door, she would knock repeatedly asking what they were doing. Lol what would they be possibly doing? Playing poker. Powder his back. <laughs> Failed exorcisms. Client had an inner ear condition that caused chronic vertigo. But symptoms could be treated with medication. Husband was an evangelical who was convinced his wife one had become possessed and that her vertigo and general crankiness with his methods were evidence of demonic possession. Two, the medications she was taking was enabling the devil to hide inside her. And three, the only proper recourse was to try various methods of exorcism. He would hide her meds until she got dizzy and then try various methods of exorcism. This included sweating it out, put under blankets, while incapacitated and locked in a room full of space eater, freezing it out, pretty much the reverse with ack, fans, and bags of ice, surprising it out, he would jump out and scare her like it was the hiccups. But instead of yelling back quote boo, he would recite the Lord's Prayer or Psalms. The final straw was that he tried to back quote surprise it out of her by pushing her down the stairs when they were heading out for dinner. Note, this guy was some type of executive, and they still went out to dinner after the stairs incident. But she asked for the divorce at an Applebee's that night. I have often tried to picture that conversation, as she was adamant that he was a total sweetheart and never acted out of malice or anger. Damn. I used to work in a general practice firm, and the guy that worked across the hallway from me was a family law attorney. He was a good attorney, but every day I would hear him yelling on the phone at his clients. One day I asked him why he did, when it was obviously stressful in a non-legal work type of way. He pointed out that there's one chapter of statutes dedicated to it, and you need to know a little civil procedure and that's about it. It's an amazing segment of business. Not only is not that difficult from an intellectual rigor perspective, but holy shit. Those family law attorneys make serious bank for willing to put up with the headaches. I would routinely hear him yelling at clients like, Don't go over there. I'm instructing you to not go there. If you go there, I will fire you as a client, and when you go to jail I won't take your call. For the record, this was in a fairly affluent suburb. Most of the disputes that would drive him into my office for a break would revolve around parents wanting to know their recourse for ex-hubby dropping the kids off 4 minutes later than agreed, and how the client planned to get even. I also recall one time a client had gotten his cell phone number and called him on a Saturday evening with some emergency. Spoiler. His ex had done something egregious like took the kids to the pool without his consent. So. On Monday morning the attorney sent the client an invoice for $500 for a Saturday phone call, which probably lasted like 5 minutes. He did it, so the guy would call him and say what's this, and then the attorney could explain to him that is what he charges for non-emergency weekend calls. This time he'd waive it, but if he ever did it again he could be sure to get a bill that he'd end up paying. Damn. Not a divorce lawyer. But I had a friend whose parents divorced for irreconcilable differences over time spent playing EverQuest. Damn. I'm my game design class. It was referred to as Evercrack. He got drunk at the wedding. She did not like it. And decided to divorce him right after the honeymoon, which she went to without him. Moreover, this was all an elaborate scheme of divorce robbery. Because the guy was loaded. And so was his entire family. They were loaded because they were a family of excellent lawyers. And he was a third generation lawyer. With all the smarts and experience of his predecessors combined. Let's just say it did not go well for her. Ben. I do my student practice at my family's law firm. Young woman filed for a divorce because her husband drank one beer during weekdays after a day of work. The guy wasn't violent. Doing drugs. Or anything like that. He was just a normal. 
polite guy who like to have a cold one after 10 hour shift. They are very good couple and argue so rarely that this woman's friends told her to write down everything he did to upset her and reread it every day. So she had reasons to be angry about. My mom, lawyer, set the woman straight. Told her he just doing what all guys do and to find herself new friends instead of ones ready to sabotage their marriage. Ben. Was a loud chewer at the dinner table. He developed a complex and literally needed out as he couldn't bear to eat with her. Ben. The dog he bought me pissed on the carpet. Worked in matrimonial law for a year and a half before I had to leave BC it just overwhelmed me with how awful humanity is. I'll never forget filing papers that described her soon to be ex-husband's behavior, including masturbates on the living room couch without closing the door and leaves sticky tissues everywhere with further description of their three young children potentially walking in on him. Ben. I worked for a law office where the owner would talk about the man who sued for divorce because his wife would asterisk and no longer allow him to use her asterisk loaded asterisk gun as a marital aid. She had apparently agreed to it at some point and was fine with the gun as long as it was empty. But that just wasn't good enough for him. Eater, since some folks need it spelled out. By marital aid, I mean a dildo. He wanted to stick a loaded gun in her vagina as part of their sex routine. She was down for it, as long as the gun was empty. But that wasn't good enough. And he thought this was reasonable grounds for divorce. Also, I wasn't trying to be pretentious by saying marital aid. I just really didn't want to have to type out that he wanted to use a loaded gun as a dildo. But I guess nobody's leaving this thread happy today. Ben.